Yeah, those two together, right? The, the two dark, kind of olivey looking smudges. The one on the upstream side out looks a little bit bigger than the one on the, on the rock in. Yeah. Moving though, eh? They are moving. Okay, rolling. Okay, so right in there. Let's see if anybody wants to eat that. Yeah, oh, that was him right off the hall. Okay, here we go. Let's see if he drops out to the right. Here he comes, top one dropped out. You see yeah, that? I saw that, saw the movement right yeah. over. Yeah, okay, so right I'm just gonna flip it back in there. Yeah. And see if he comes out again. I'm a little, I'm playing shy on this side. And he doesn't want to come that far. Oh, he dropped, I got him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. He dropped. It's amazing that you can sight fish something that small. No. What do you think about it? Yeah, hey. You know, and there's a couple of them in there. And they're just sitting there. So come, well this is late October, and these fish have no choice but to be in deeper slots and pockets. There's not a lot of water where at minimum flows for the year. Might drop a little bit more yet come uh, winter. And the fish are only going to be in very select blue water. And that's just, you know, that blue is just a depth of water. And you can see green, gray smudges, you know, anything from that to kind of that in here. And those are fish. And you, if you take the time and look in these troughs, you'll see them kind of moving around. And there's another one that we're going to get upstream of this. And I say that we're going to get because I'm fairly confident. But all the setup is, is your little bottom fly. And I go up about a foot and a half to my next fly, and that's just literally off an eight pound line, just little droppers, to a couple pheasant tails. And then a foot above that is my indicator. And that's really what I'm doing. I mean, that whole setup from my indicator to the bottom is only what? That's about three feet. And I'm literally just sight nymphing, I'm picking off, I'm looking for those little smudges, watching them dancing around, and I cast up, and I let it drift on my side of the closest fish. That way I can drift in, catch it, pull them down, because it's really cold water, they, they don't have a lot of energy, and you can pull them this way. And then guess what? That leaves the next fish kind of further out to, to target. And then it'll just be a sequence of, of targeting fish further and further out. And I think there's two or three here. We know there's two for sure. I thought I saw a third, and there might have been a fourth further over, but let's see how this goes. So let's go back and have a good look at what happened. Well, the truth is that my goal was to catch both of these cutthroat in the same setup. I knew I'd have to be careful with my casting because if I put my flies and indicator too far upstream and across, my nymphs would drop deeper and I'd get the top trout first and possibly spook the lower outside trout. And of course I made a bad cast and put my flies too far upstream and too far across, getting the take from the top fish right off the bat, but missed that take because I was watching for movement from the bottom fish instead of watching my indicator. I missed the take and then went back to plan A, cast outside and try to catch the bottom fish first and was successful. There's a part two to this video and I do catch the second fish, but because I hooked it and had it look a second time, it became a little shy and I had to change tactics. Give part two a watch. <laughs>